Chances are you've probably heard conflicting views on leveraged ETFs such as Upro. You've probably heard some people say that they're just far too risky and you should steer clear of them altogether. And you've probably heard other people say that they can actually be really profitable investments or at least trading vehicles. So which one is it? We already know these things can be pretty frisky, especially during market crashes. Today we're going to do a deep dive into Upro, a three times leveraged S&P 500 ETF. We're going to test four different strategies, ranging from buy and hold to a little bit more sophisticated, to see if we can turn something that is viewed by many as a pretty risky ETF into a viable long-term investment. But before we get started, it literally takes half a second for you to hit that like button and it helps me out immensely. So please do that. And if you're interested in this type of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. If you do, hit that little notification bell. And if you are interested in quants-based investing, ETF rotation, uh, options, and a little bit of volatility trading, be sure to head over to tactiletrade.com and secure your 60-day free trial. So buckle up, join me for the next six or seven minutes while we take an unbiased look at Upro. Let's go. So as a really quick review, leveraged ETFs use complex derivatives like options, equity swaps, and futures to amplify the daily returns of their underlying indexes for a single day only. This means over the long term, the performance of leveraged ETFs can deviate substantially from their vanilla counterparts. I've made a video explaining how leveraged ETFs work, so I'll leave the description below and I'll also leave a link to it at the end of this video, so if you are unfamiliar with them, be sure to check that out afterwards. Because leveraged ETFs have to use all of these derivatives to amplify the daily returns, it means that the fund managers of these leveraged ETFs have to rebalance their holdings every single day. And this introduces what's called leverage decay, also known as volatility decay. When the underlying is experiencing a lot of volatility, that means the highs are higher and the lows are lower. And that is when you really start to notice this leverage decay. And that's exactly what we're going to look at today. If we know that leveraged ETFs are affected the most by periods of high volatility, that is to say periods of high volatility are when leverage decay is the worst, such as stock market crashes, the question is, can we develop a set of rules to use as filters to filter out the worst of that volatility and only be in for the good periods when it's beneficial to be using leverage? As I mentioned, we're going to be comparing four different strategies for managing Upro. The first two are inspired from videos I've actually seen here on YouTube. One is just a simple iron fisted buy and hold through and through, and the other is managing Upro using a 200 day moving average. The next two approaches are ones I devised myself. One is using the VIX index as a volatility filter, and the other is using my market sentiment index, which is a proprietary stock market indicator that I actually developed myself. So we're going to try using that as a, a volatility filter as well. We'll compare all four approaches to each other and see which one we like the best. First up is buying and holding Upro. So if we just look at 2010 to Q1 2015, this actually would have performed pretty well. It would have returned about two and a half times that of the SPY. Very, very solid returns. However, if we fast forward to present day and look at 2010 all the way up to November 2020, it's an entirely different story. Now we can see that volatility decay we talked about a second ago really starting to take its toll. Anytime there's chop or a market crash, it causes nothing but problems for Upro. I think it's safe to say buy and hold is a non-starter. So quickly, let's look at the return metrics up until 2015. 35% annualized return, that's great. Sharp ratio of 0.72, it's not great, but it's okay. Better than the S&P 500. However, the maximum drawdown is still 52%. Even during a bull market, you still would have lost half your money. And if we walk forward all the way to December 2020, um, it starts to show its true colors. Still, 31% is a pretty high annualized return, uh, substantial reduction in the sharp ratio, and that 77% drawdown is definitely a deal breaker. Imagine losing 77% of your money. No thank you. Let's move on to our actively managed approaches. The first one is holding Upro whenever the S&P 500 is above its 200 day moving average. Depending on how good you are at timing the market, this approach could have worked out pretty well, it definitely performs better during extended bull market periods. 2015 still would have done a lot of damage. And then look at 2018 up until now. In the last two and a half, three years, you'd basically be at break even despite having incurred some pretty large drawdowns. Clearly the 200 day moving average approach runs into some problems whenever there are periods of higher volatility. Let's compare the return metrics of the 200 day moving average method to the buy and hold method. 
So we've got a lower annualized return, a lower sharp ratio, and a reduction in the maximum drawdown. Clearly the 200 day moving average actually doesn't do a very good job of filtering out the volatility. On that note, let's move on to our volatility specific approaches. So this is a chart of holding UPRO whenever the VIX index is below 25. And since the VIX is a volatility index, it measures a 30 day period forward implied volatility on the S&P 500, naturally it's gonna do a better job of filtering out the volatility and it has. The VIX method seems to combine the best of both worlds from the buy and hold and the 200 day moving average. We've got the high return from the buy and hold, but we also have the reduced drawdowns from the 200 day moving average method. The sharp ratio is also quite a bit better. Last but not least, let's look at holding UPRO whenever the market sentiment index is below 75%. I think this really highlights the potency of combining multiple indicators together into a system. When we look at the risk adjusted returns, the MSI method blows the other three out of the water. 46% annualized return, a sharp ratio approaching one, so it's almost what's considered to be a good investment. However, the maximum drawdown is actually still pretty high at 50%. So this goes to show the nature of leveraged products. The drawdowns that you're gonna experience with these, regardless of how good your indicators are, they're still gonna be a lot higher than vanilla ETFs. So to sum it up, despite a pretty high rate of return on all four options, I still wouldn't invest in any of them just yet, mostly because of the drawdowns. However, if I had a gun to my head and I had to choose, I'd definitely choose the MSI method. A 48% drawdown is by no means great, but it sure is a heck of a lot better than 77%. But I definitely think there's some opportunity here. If you were to mix and match these approaches and maybe introduce some other indicators alongside them, it seems, according to this test at least, that you could turn UPRO into a long-term investment. I just want to say here that although the results with the MSI are pretty impressive, using the MSI alone as a trading indicator is just not robust enough. What separates good traders from average traders is their ability to combine several indicators to use in a system. And using one indicator on its own isn't really sufficient, even if it is multiple indicators combined into a single index. My asset class rotation strategy does use the MSI as a base, but it does have many other indicators combined with it. So never rely on one indicator for your trading. I'd also like to point out that everything we've done here is a back test during a bull market. Things may not always be this rosy. Things do change. Market conditions do evolve. And I think we did see a little bit of that with the 200 day moving average. It definitely didn't function as well in the last two years from 2018 to 2020 as it had during the prior years of the bull market. So that's also something to keep in mind. So should you invest in UPRO? Well, the answer is, it depends. As far as buying and holding, I think that's definitely out. And as far as a 200 day moving average goes, I think that's also out as well. I think there are far more sophisticated metrics that you can use than a 200 day moving average. Everybody knows what it is. There's not much of an edge. And as we saw, it doesn't actually do a very good job of filtering out the volatility which is what we're after if we are gonna be trading leveraged ETFs. We wanna minimize that volatility because that's when the real damage occurs. So as long as you know how leveraged ETFs work, as long as you know what the risks are, and as long as you're able to develop some trading rules that are easy enough for you to follow and that do a re reliable job of filtering out the volatility, then I'd say yes, UPRO is definitely a viable long-term investment. But keep in mind though, whenever you're dealing with leverage, the risk is always higher than vanilla ETFs. It all really just comes down to your personal risk tolerance and understanding how these things work. If you'd like to try out some of these approaches yourself, I have recorded an in-depth tutorial for backtesting ETFs in Excel. So be sure to check that out. I'll link that in the description below as well. So I hate to ask twice, but if you could please like this video, it really, really does help me out. And also consider subscribing to my channel if you do hit the notification bell and head over to tactiletrade.com and secure your 60 day free trial if quants based investing is something that you're interested in. Thanks for watching the video.